good afternoon, Easy Properties uh, community. It is great to be with you once again. Uh, Easter is upon us, uh, lots of holidays in April, um, but it's always good to chat to the Easy community. My name is Carl, for those of you I haven't met before, and uh, I'm not going to be your host this afternoon. We're joined by two people that are far smarter and better looking than me. Like you, I'm a property investor by Easy Properties, and I'm always keen to learn uh, and find out more to help me uh, improve my portfolio. And with us having our first commercial property on the platform, we thought it a good idea to get one of the hotshots of the property industry to, to join us. So we're joined by uh, one of the teammates from Capstone, uh, who are the managing agents of the property that we have on the platform, Media Mill, uh, Karis, and she's the person who is going to be grilled by Ronald, our uh, marketing manager uh, from Easy Properties. And uh, they're gonna tell us all the things we need to know to make lots more money from our properties, property investments. Now, this is the first time that Ronald is hosting a webinar. So he's extremely nervous. Um, and uh, by the end of this, you will see that he was very silly to be nervous because I have no doubt that he is going to do a brilliant job. Uh, he just has to stop smiling, which he always does. Uh, and ask Karis the hard question. So Ronald, over to you and thanks guys, enjoy. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Um, it's awesome to be here. Awesome toast to Karis. Um, looking forward know. to having a good conversation with you. So um, just to jump straight into it, Karis, uh, please tell us a little bit about you and what you do as a commercial property manager. Like what does that entail? Hi, Ronald. So as you mentioned, I am a commercial property manager. Um, that role is a multifaceted role. It involves in kind of a blanket term, making sure that the property runs like a well-oiled machine. Um, and part of that process is engaging with the current tenants to make sure that they are happy from a leasing and a maintenance point of view, dealing with their queries, making sure that they are happy, safe and secure in their building. Then another part of the job is engaging with suppliers and those suppliers can be from a facilities point of view. So security companies, cleaning companies, um, and then also very important um, in terms of suppliers is engaging with the municipalities and making sure that things okay. run effectively and smoothly. So those are the sort of areas of property management that we focus on, as well as dealing with brokers and making sure that we have good relationships with the brokers who will help us source high quality tenants and place them into our properties. Okay, that is amazing. Um, so like on to my next question, right? So, I mean, I was reading the prospectus and they were mentioning something about a GLA, right? So a GLA, I think like it stands for gross litable area, right? Cool, so I mean, it's there. I have no idea what the hell that is. So, I mean, please tell me a little bit about what a GLA is. Well, firstly, you are correct. It does stand for gross letable area. So, well done. Thank you. <laughs> so, what we mean by that is when we look at a building, we obviously have the size of the building, which is the gross build area. Where the gross letable area differs is it's the actual portion of the building that we are leasing out mm. to tenants or potential tenants. So it will be the square meterage size that we are actually paying rental on and leasing out to people. Um, and you know that the differentiation comes in the sense that that GLA excludes things like electrical DB boards or parking lots or sort of things like that. And it purely refers to the portion of the building that we are leasing out for rental. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, now, on to my next question, right? So, I mean, like I hear that these commercial properties are like classified, right? So they're graded, you know? So you have like an A grade, B grade, double A, triple A grade, right? And I mean, for me, like it all sounds like triple A is the best. That's, you know, top notch. Now, tell me a little bit about these gradings. Okay, so as we know and can see very clearly from on the road, not all buildings are created equal or look equal. And that's why we use this classification system to differentiate between different buildings. How the this, this system works is we generally categorize buildings by age, amenities, general aesthetics, and the infrastructure of the building. What we mean by that is, let me take like an example. So for example, Santon, you drive through Santon, Santon has the highest grade building. So 
the discovery building. That would be a grade P building. It's graded so highly because it has the state of the art technology in terms of infrastructure, lighting, aircon systems, finishes. And then we go down from P grade to A grade, B grade, C grade. And as we go down the grades, it means that the amenities in the buildings are slightly lower on the different grades and the buildings might be a little bit older. Um, and that different grading affects the base rentals in the building. So for example, in Sanson, in a P grade or A grade office, your base rental is a lot higher than say, for example, an area like Bramfontein where the buildings may be older and they classified as B or C grade. Um, okay. And things, things that are important and interesting for me in terms of that grading system are looking at things that are very relevant in this day and age, like green buildings and having a look at how the buildings are using solar power and gray water systems. And that mm. becomes important in these classifications of the buildings. Mm. Mm. Wow, I didn't know that. And I mean, like, do those grades stand for anything? Like, I mean, you mentioned P, like I thought like we all start from A, B, C, and now you're telling me that like top notch is P. Does that stand for anything or is that just a random letter they chose? <laughs> no, P stands for premium. <laughs> so oh. it is a premium, <laughs> premium space <laughs> above aid. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Cool. Now, there's another abbreviation. I feel like, you know, like we just filled with a lot of uh, abbreviations, right? So this is a W-A-L-E or is it a whale? I don't know. Um, a weighted average lease expiry. I mean... What does that mean? Okay, so it's it's very different to what you will find in the ocean in Hermanis. Um, the weighted <laughs> <laughs> the weighted average lease expiry is a metric we use and um, to measure portfolio's risk of going vacant. Hmm. So just to explain that to you in terms of what it means for an investor is you know, you as an investor, you want to look at investing in a property that has a typically longer whale. Um, mm. That means that that building may be significantly easier to sell um, at a higher price if it has a longer whale. How mm. we how we measure the whale, it's done in time, in years, if that makes sense. So it's measured yeah. across all yeah. tenants' remaining lease in years and it's weighted with either the tenants as occupied GLA or the tenants as income against the total combined area or income of the other tenants. Mm. Okay. So would you like me to elaborate more on why it's important or does yes, that kind of yes. give you please, please, please do elaborate a little further. Okay. So for an example, when we look, as I mentioned to you, um, investors want to typically look for commercial buildings that have a, a longer or lengthier whale. Mm -hmm. um, when buildings have a shorter whale, they, they generally have smaller tenants who do not commit to leases of longer than five years. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that there's a higher vacancy risk in the building compared to a property with larger tenants who have a longer term lease agreement. Mm, mm, mm. Perfect, so perfect. It's not always, it, you know, and it's not always bad to have a shorter whale because sometimes yeah. in commercial properties that have a shorter whale, they're able to manifest more robo robust growth internally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm, I mean, speaking of leases, right? So my next question is around like the different types of leases that that um, tenants would sign, right? So like, what is a double net and a triple net lease? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'll tell you a bit about that. But I think before we dive into that, mm -hmm. I'll just sort of, we were talking about leases and length of leases. When we mm -hmm. talk about a single or double or triple net lease, that actually has nothing to do with the length of lease agreement. Um, okay. So Let's just separate that from what we were just talking about, which oh, is the okay. length of lease agreements, which is associated to the whale. So when we talk about net leases, it's a lease in which a tenant pays one or more additional expenses um, relating to the property. So in a single net lease, the tenant will pay typically a lower base rent in addition to property taxes. Then we move to a double net lease, which includes the property taxes, as well as insurance premiums in addition to the base rental. 
Mm. Okay, so it's one higher than a single. Then we take it one higher to a triple net lease. A triple net lease generally includes the property taxes, insurance, as well as various maintenance costs um, in addition to the base rental. What do we mean by maintenance costs? It can be anything from air conditioning units to um, you know, plumbing to electrical issues. So generally a triple net lease is the most expensive um, and it does have higher costs associated with them because you are adding all those additional costs on top of the base rental. So when we look at buildings these days, especially given the current climate, landlords typically use a bondable lease and not necessarily a triple net lease because it lands up becoming too expensive for the tenant. So you okay. kind of look at using a bondable one, generally double net leases, but also you need to be flexible with regards mm. to putting these together based on your tenants and their requirements. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, that was so informative, eh? Sheesh. <laughs> and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm speaking on, on leases in Wales. What is a vacancy rate, you know? And I mean, does it tie into any of those that we just mentioned now? Absolutely. So when you're looking from an investment point of view, if we're looking at easy properties and investing in a building, a vacancy rate becomes a very important measure to look at. So what that is, is that is the number of available units or vacant units in a property. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the amount of units that are currently not let out or you're not attaining rental on, and it's expressed as a percentage of your total GLA. So typically investors, when they're looking at investing in a property, you want to look at buildings that have a very, very low um, vacancy rate. Why? Because that signifies a very high rental demand. Whereas mm. if you go and you start moving towards higher vacancy rates, it means that there's not really a significant demand for rental in that property. Um, so you typically really want to look at, generally we say a percentage of lower than two or so is an excellent one to invest in. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, and I mean, like that was absolutely amazing. So now with all this info that you've given us, right, on all the commercial property terms, right, uh, I'm quite interested to chat a little bit about the, uh, the current building that we have on uh, easy properties, right? Uh, the media mill. You know, so, and I know there's a rich history that that is on Media Mill. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Media Mill's background? Absolutely. So the Media Mill is a, is a really fascinating building and it tells quite a story, in fact, a wonderful story. So what Media Mill used to be is it used to be an old baking mill. It was used to bake various goods. Um, oh, wow. And then in yeah. And then in 2008, so that's where the one part of its name actually originates from, mill, because it was mm -hmm. an old baking mill. And then in 2008, it was redeveloped from a baking mill into commercial office space. And mm -hmm. where the media part comes into the name is that the building's proximity is really close to the SABC. So traditionally, mm -hmm. it was housing a lot of these media companies that wanted to be close to the SABC. Um, such as the Mail and Garden was one of the original anchor tenants of the building. So that is a bit of the history behind the building. It was redeveloped in 2008 and it was purchased by the current owners in 2012. Mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then tell me a little bit, like how long have you been involved in Media Mill and like what is the vibe and culture there? So I've been involved in the Media Mill. I've been managing the Media Mill for two and a half years now. Um, and... When I look at the media mill, what is great about it is the tenant mix. So it's a multi-tenanted building. So you typically have smaller businesses that are in growth phases or growing and expanding. We have an excellent mix of tenants from NGOs to the traditional media houses that would like to be close to the SABC. We also have a lot of learning hubs as well as software companies, digital marketing companies. So there's a really excellent and healthy mix of tenants amongst different industries and largely based in the creative or software sphere mm -hmm. of industry. Very true, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I've like popped in there a couple of times. It is quite nice, eh? Sheesh. And then I just wanted to know, um, like, what is the demand for like office space there? You know, like, do, like, do you get a lot of queries? 
you know, just absolutely, mm. absolutely. So, medium mill because it's quirky and um, because it's also got this industrial feel. If you look through the pictures, it's incredibly unique, which sets it apart from its competitors in the industry. It's got this quirky industrial feel, and now that you know it's an old baking mill that yeah. has even more of a special story behind it, um, there's always a constant stream of queries um, for space at the media mill. And th that is twofold. It's because of what I've just explained with the history, mm. the story, the feel, but also, for example, in the case of a software company or something like that, the location is incredible because from a supply point of view, it's close to the university. So it acts as a nice close feeding property, you know, close for students to get to. And then from a demand point of view, you're close to a lot of the bigger banks like the F&Bs and the standard banks just down the road. So you are close to your client. So we've been very lucky in that we have this constant stream of queries and inquiries to be at the media mill as one of our tenants. Um, and if we look at the anchor building, which is the building we're listing with easy properties, the vacancy rate at the moment is zero. Just while we're talking about this building specifically, you and Ronald were talking earlier about the ratings, the P and A and B. And one thing that was for me interesting is it doesn't automatically mean that if you've got a high rating, you're a better building. And so you might have a P rated building that's got a high vacancy rate. Uh, and I think people often think that P means best. And if it's a B or C, it's, it's not a good building. So maybe you can just talk a little bit about that and relate it also to media mill. Absolutely. So part of what I mentioned earlier with the rating systems is that it affects the base rental. So for example, your P grade, your base rental is incredibly, incredibly high. And not all businesses can afford such a rate. Um, you know, typically the bigger corporates can, if you're looking at the discoveries or you're looking at the legal firms. But now we come to smaller businesses that are rapidly growing in the NGO space or in the digital or creative space. They typically can't afford that P grade. So a B grade comes in, in, it's a great building, it's quirky, it's got unique features, it's still well-maintained, but actually the base rental is a lot more affordable for smaller businesses who are looking for office space and who need office space, but you know want to be able to afford it. And uh, Karis, in terms of Capstone and what you guys are seeing post-COVID and in this world where everybody's working out, whether it's going to be remote working or hybrid working, um, what is your view on the demand for commercial property going forward? I mean, do you think we're going to see strong demand still tapering off totally? You know, what are you guys seeing? And I mean, you're obviously negotiating leases yes. and you've got strong relationships with your tenants. So what are they telling you? So, I mean, for me, what I find interesting, and I've always maintained this, is that definitely commercial office space is is in demand. Um, I think that more so than ever, people over the last two years have realized that people can't, can't really always work from home. They need that office culture. They need that space where they have the facilities, where they have the engagement, that face-to-face -face interaction. So from our side, what we're seeing is still the steady stream of inquiries and actually more and more are coming through and you know what we're seeing is a lot of tenants who may have been in bigger space do want to downgrade to smaller space but there's definitely still a demand for that office space and people are wanting to be in the office yeah absolutely and i think that's part of the business case and some of the information that's been shared uh, in the prospectus for for us as investors um and um you know the the yield and the returns that we can expect can you maybe chat us a little bit about shorter term leases um, yes. and specifically as it relates to, to the media mill? Is that something that's you know, unique to the media mill or, uh, or something that uh, is a general uh, practice? So I think it varies from building to building. And again, it varies according to your tenant base. So as I mentioned at media mill, we have a really great mix of a lot of different smaller businesses. And typically with the smaller businesses, they don't sign longer leases they sign you know one to three year leases to see how the business goes and 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 there is merit in that because you have a lot more tenants and you aren't exposed to a really long five-year lease with one tenant that might be significantly more risky for you because if that business folds you've got a five-year lease and you've got one tenant, and now that tenant is gone, what do you do? Whereas at Medium, we've got these shorter term leases, constant flow, constant demand. 
And it's great because what we do find is with those shorter term leases, you can roll on the escalations. And what we find with those shorter term leases is often some of our smaller businesses come to us and they grow into bigger spaces. And with a long term five year or 10 year lease, you don't have that sort of flexibility that comes with the shorter leases and you don't have that with the shorter leases, you don't have that risk exposure that you do to one solid long lease. Mm, yeah. So I think, I mean, you've raised a number of interesting points for me. So one is I think it's it's very beneficial for us as investors to know the type of um, agent in Capstone that we're working with. So somebody who's got strong relationships with tenants that can walk a road with them, um, you know, that helps in terms of uh, the stability of this investment. And I love the fact that you speak about diversity uh, or diversification, you know, in the, in the, in the mix in terms of the, the length of the lease. Because we often say at Easy Equities, we don't really mind what people invest in, although Rupert, the CEO of uh, Easy Properties, will, will, will say that we've got to start with properties. But, um, but it's diversifying your, your investments and putting on a commercial property is now diversifying the type of properties we can invest in. And then the media mill, I love the fact that we don't just have one type of tenant, one length of lease. Um, so it's unlikely that we're going to have all the tenants leave because it's not linked to just one industry. So I think there's lots of protection built in while there's no guarantees, there's lots of protection built in, uh, built in for investors. Um, talk to us a little bit about location. I mean, we, we mentioned earlier the, the students and stuff when you were speaking, um, but anything more to say about location? I mean, are there other buildings around that we can compare and what are their rates like in terms of occup occupation, shopping centers, uh, accommodation, things like that? Absolutely. So I think that a great point about Media Mill is its proximity to sort of you know, attractive features and, and sort of interesting features within Johannesburg. So we just behind 44 Stanley, which is a great development. We down the road from Randsteam Shopping Center. Also a great aspect about Media Mill is it's, um, it's located in an area where it has um, access to major public transport routes. So you see a lot of the businesses we work with, a lot of their staff need to take public transport. So it sits in a node where it's easy, easily accessible accessible by those who need to take public transport and then as I said earlier for a lot of businesses from a supply point of view the location is excellent because it's right next to the universities UJ, Vits um, and then for a lot of digital marketing companies and content creators mm. which is very relevant in this day and age you sit right next to Bramfontein and everybody knows that Bramfontein is the hub of youth culture and street culture. And for a lot of those digital agencies, they need to be close to that sort of energy and pulse. And that is an excellent aspect of the location of Media Mill. Hmm. And uh, now you've been doing such a great job that I'm delighted to point out that you've made a mistake now because you failed to mention that the biggest advantage of Media Mill is basically next to the Easy Equities and Easy Properties offices. Oh, I thought you were moving your offices to Media Mill, so that was <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we might have to do that, but it does mean that we're going to be around there making, uh, taking advantage of the little restaurant, coffee shop area that you guys mentioned earlier, which was really cool. Um, but it is; it's a fantastic space, and and we're delighted that we moved into the area a couple of years back, and we've certainly loved uh, being there, um, and it's been great. Um, and it's been great for, for all of us. And I think if Rupert had his way, we probably would be moving to the media mall. So buy him a drink and you'll, you'll get us. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I, I just looked on the site and I mean, I think all the information is also there. And for those who haven't yet invested uh, in media mill, uh, it's up for a little while still, but, uh, but we like to get in early. Um, so uh, check out the prospectus. Um, this is our first commercial building, which was asked for by users. It certainly won't be our last. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, it just adds some added diversification to, to your portfolio. So I think that's it. We'll keep uh, users posted. Um, I was keen to highlight some of the tenants, but I don't know if I'm allowed to do that without checking with them and you. Maybe not. We're, uh, we'll mention one because um, they currently the Donate for Good uh, beneficiary on our Easy Equities platform. And the Easy Equities community are so amazing. Um, they donate, um, you know, thousands of brands every month um, by making a donation when they buy and and, uh, and sell equities. And the one that we're featuring is the, I don't know the full name, unfortunately, you might be able to correct me, but it's the Breast Milk Association of South Africa. Is that correct? I think um, that's South, 
it's South African Breast Milk Reserve. Like that, thank you. And I mean, it's fascinating what they do, and um, and there's more information about them on the Easy Equities website. Um, but that for me was just speaks exactly to what you were saying. We've got engineers in the building. We've got this amazing NPO in the building. Got a PR agency in the building. So it's just a really uh, like a mix. Uh, but like the Easy Equities and Easy Properties community. So thanks, Harris. Is there anything else you want to wrap up with apart from telling people that they should invest in the media mall? They definitely should. And and part of that, I just want to leave a final comment is that by investing in Media Mill, you're not only investing in the physical bricks and mortar of the property, what adds value to the investment is our tenants. And you're investing in small, growing South African local businesses and businesses that are spread across different industries. And investment in the Media Mill is an investment in tenants and an investment in business in South Africa. And I think that it's incredible to be involved in something like that and to not just own the building, but to be supporting these incredible tenants and their businesses and what they are doing for the South African economy, as well as the South African people on the NGO front, like South African Breast Milk Reserve. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. I think it's a it's a great way to to support those businesses as well and to to further our own investments. So, concluding from my side, um, apologies from Ronald. Of course, as Murphy's law would have it, he got load shedding and his three G didn't work. So uh, it was good that he was stressed. Um, but as we say, nobody's died and we'll all survive. Um, I do want to give a bit of a shout out just to uh, one of the users that's that's with us, uh, uh, Jason Dupria. Uh, who is an avid supporter of Easy Properties. Um, so Jason, thanks for everything that you're doing. And a big part of what we love at Easy Properties and at Easy Equities is the community educating each other and helping each other and teaching each other and learning together. And these webinars and our YouTube channel is part of that. So uh, thanks to Jason and everybody else for the role that you play. And uh, thanks, Karis. Have a lacquer, uh, long weekend. And uh, We'll see you uh, as the listing goes on and we talk about it in the future. Keep well. Thank you. Thank you. So